Right, it's Tuesday morning and um, what we're going to do is look at this uh, Hebrides coastal scene but first we're going to tackle the sky. I want to introduce you to a principle now that is in my book The Easy Guide to Painting Skies um, and this is where we p think of a sky in three phases. Um, it still all has to be painted within that kind of two minute period but this helps us to understand better what we've got to do during that two minute period so as you can see I've drawn here three boxes this is the painting itself with the horizon on each one so the first phase will be to wet the whole of the paper with a hake brush and then I'm gonna run in some raw sienna across here I'm gonna write raw sienna on my sketch I don't want too much it's just to give a creamy tinge across the bottom area of the sky bear in mind as this color is going in this is all wet just the same as we would wet any sky now I'm also want to put some cerulean blue into the sky in the upper area so I don't want to pick up the cerulean blue with the hake because it'll have some raw sienna in it and it'll contaminate the blue so the option is to either wash the brush out or have another brush on standby to put the cerulean blue on which is what I tend to favour. So I'm going to use a large hake to put the water on the paper and brush in the raw sienna and then I'm going to use one of my mini hake brushes to pick up a little of the cerulean blue and I'm going to put that into the sky in sort of two patches like this. They can be fairly random, they don't have to be exactly that shape or precisely in that position. But I'm going to put CB there in those, just to remind me that that's, that, that's the colour that's going there. So it's all wet, I've put the raw sienna in with the large hake, I've picked up some cerulean blue and put a couple of patches of cerulean blue. Now what that should do is keep the cerulean and the raw sienna away from each other so that we don't get this green colour as they mix. It will also leave areas of white around those colours which will help bleed through into the final sky a little bit of white. So that's phase one complete. Immediately then I move to phase two which is now to use the large hake. Uh, I'm just going to put hake there and mini hake there just to remind me. So phase two I'm going to use the large hake again and I'm going to mix some plum and that's ultramarine and light red mixed together that's our usual mix and I'm going to basically paste the sort of brush across the area now and put in the cloud and this main cloud I'm instead of having it passing all the way across like a big stripe I'm going to sort of split it make it a little bit more interesting so it's got a bit of a split in it like that and I'm going to have another one coming in here another smaller one and I'm just going to drift in a few lower lying clouds as well across the bottom which you can see in the photograph so I've redesigned the sky a little bit to make it a little bit more balanced what's important here is that when I pick the plum up here to create the shape of these clouds I don't want too much colour in the brush so it's not a case of plunging it in and picking up masses of this plum colour just a relatively small amount until you've got the shape of the clouds in place and that means you can use a small amount of the paint then just to put in these lower drifts of cloud down here and then we go to phase three immediately again it has to be immediate I'm going to use a large hake again this time I'm going to use Muchos Plumos. <laughs> there you are. There you are. You're featuring on the video again, Anne. You see? I did say. Uh, I'll edit that bit out, by the way. Not your laugh. I'll edit this. Please don't worry. It, it adds a little atmosphere to the video. Um, so this is uh, where I plunge the brush into the plum mix now. And 
pick up lots of it but I don't want to go over the, all of the clouds again I just want to now selectively beef up part of the cloud so I'm gonna have a little bit coming in from the top a little bit coming in from the right and I'll have a little trail of it there so I've got kind of four places and a little bit just on here look on that a little bit there so as you can see I'm not I'm not intending to put this large amount these this thick lump of this plum across all of the cloud again the idea is just to put it selectively which will make the clouds look like they're swirling they've got different thicknesses and make them three-dimensional I'm also not intending to put any down here I'm hoping that these lower clouds will be strong enough they want to be paler anyway so three phases wet the paper drop in your raw sienna your two patches of cerulean immediately we can then pick up some of this plum and put just basically design the shape of the clouds and then go back and finish off by picking up a lot of the plum and cutting that in so that's the plan okay i just put that to one side here's the palette then so what i'm going to do with the palette is i've put quite a big blob of ultramarine here most of you will be familiar now with what this is i've put some water in that uh, and i've made that into the consistency of olive oil there's a lot of it as well and i'm going to just slowly add the light red be careful you don't put too much light red in too soon otherwise it'll just go red and you should find you will gradually approach a very strong deep purple color and I call it plum and it's the right time of year for plums isn't it so if you've got any in your garden you'll probably find they are this color uh, so it's but the important thing is the consistency of it it's very strong it's like it's like oil you could almost have that as thick as motor oil the idea is that if you just tilt your palette it will flow if it's not flowing then it's too it's too stodgy I've also got on the palette a little blob of cerulean blue and a little blob of raw sienna just ready to pick up right I'm going to put the sky on now in accordance with the plant so I want to put the cerulean blue in with this mini hake so I don't want this to be soaking wet so basically I'm just gonna wet it and then scrape off the excess water so that there's not too much water in that because if if I pick up the cerulean blue with that soaking wet when I put it on the paper it'll just explode uncontrollably so I'm just making sure the excess water uh, is has gone from there just put that to one side and then I'm going to soak the hake and make sure the water's dripping out of it and then I'm going to wet the paper nice gentle sweeps from side to side distributing the water across the paper please notice I'm extending the brush right onto the board and right above the tape at the top here this puts water on the board and on the tape and it'll stop the paper from drying up round the edges really quickly So how much water should there be on the paper we're looking for a thin film that's nice and even that isn't running but it needs to stay wet long enough to get all of this sky in I'm just going to put a tiny bit more at the top and hope that I've got that right okay that's ready now for me to put the paint in let's just remind ourselves quickly of those phases so I'm going to put some raw sienna in and the cerulean on phase one so up a little raw sienna and sweep that right across the intended area at the bottom making sure it comes down below the horizon there it's not much there it's just enough to give a nice creamy effect then I'm going to pick up a little of the cerulean with my little mini hake and we'll put some of that into a patch up here and a patch over on this side and that leaves plenty of white space all the way around the blue doesn't come into contact with the raw sienna so it won't go green okay that's two patches of the cerulean up there and then phase two 
comes next, which is just basically creating the shape of these clouds. So I'm just going to put the hake, the initial hake now, touch that into the plum, and let's let's design these clouds. Pull the brush across. In my sketch, the cloud went up there and then continued across there. Like that. And I also had one to pick up a little bit more paint. I also had one down here. Coming down here. So this is just phase two. Now, what little bit of paint I've got left in the brush now, I'm going to use to just turn the brush sideways on and draw across some nice low-lying horizontal clouds. Right, phase three, muchos plumos. Okay, plunge the brush into the plum, make sure you've got plenty of paint on there, and then cut that in and create some really lovely darker bits. Like that, and then a little bit on that side as well. That is what I planned from my sketch. Let's have a look at it. One there, four areas of darker paint. And then after that, what you do is you just enjoy watching that paint develop because it will develop. So long as you get all three phases completed in time with water, active water still on the paper, you can sit back and watch your sky develop. The edges of the clouds will soften. You'll get, there's a little bit of paint move on the move here, which is rather lovely. It's a good idea, by the way, to get rid of any excess water around the edge, like that, because that will stop any water feeding back, bleeding back into the sky. And at this stage, I'm just going to take off that excess there that's now gathering below the horizon. And that's probably ready for me now to put a hairdryer on it, because it's developed quite nicely, that. Right, that's dried off. Um, and you'll notice I've also drawn a line from here to here. Now this line represents the edge of the dry sand and the beginning of the sort of what I'd call the wet water's edge here. I know this water isn't very deep, it's very shallow, we've got strips of sand all the way across it. But this is the dry section where the sand is dry and the rocks are sitting on that dry sand. Uh, and it comes about a third of the way down from the horizon there down to about halfway down here so that's why I've drawn this line on that's just so that I know where I'm going I've got a little bit of raw sienna that's come down over this horizon here so my first job is I'm just going to get a little bit of water in the brush just using this mini hake you can use any brush you want and I'm basically just running that across there it just reactivates that raw sienna which means I can then just take it off with a bit of kitchen towel. So that's that done. Just, uh, by the way, just be careful when you do this. Don't scrub with your kitchen towel. Kitchen towel is much more abrasive than you think. And it can mark the paper. So it's best just to dab it. Right, so in the lower section there. So I've got rid of that. That's just in preparation for that in a sec. I'm just going to use my mini hake. I've got some water in it. This is where the burnt umber comes in. I'm literally going to pick up a very small amount of burnt umber and wash that into this area on the lower part. Now, when, when we did the crab exercise a couple of weeks ago, we did exactly the same thing. We just washed in an incredibly dilute wash of burnt umber, and that gives you that sort of biscuity colour, beige colour, which is the light, lovely light colour of the sand. But I'm also going to just pick up a little bit of raw sienna and flash a little bit of that in as well just to blend in because there's a, if you look at the photo you'll find that the sand looks a bit more golden for some reason down in this yeah. bottom corner so I've just blended in um, two different colours there but again it's nice and pale so I just need to let that dry before I tackle the sea uh, I've just dried that off you can see that pencil line that's there now I should be able to get rid of that now if I want to the, the separation between the sea and that dry sand is now marked with some actual paint and I don't really want that ugly pencil line so I can easily get rid of that and all I'm going to do is paint onto here this 
underlying light sea colour. None of the dark bits. And that is pretty much the cerulean blue that's reflecting out of the sky. So once again, I'm just going to use the mini hake, a little bit of water in it, a little bit of cerulean blue. I'm just going to pull that across this area here, sweep it across. Again, I'm trying to keep this lovely movement from side to side going. Lovely energetic brush strokes, pulling all the way across there. And that just puts a little bit of, of a blue base down. And it can be a little bit uneven as well. If it's uneven, that's quite helpful. So there we go. You can see now I've clearly got an area of reflecting blue in the wet area and this lovely dry strip of sand there. That's what we're aiming to, to achieve. Right, so those two sections are dry. Uh, I've got a nice line of separation between the two. So if we look at the picture, you'll see that we've got these strips now, really narrow strips running across here. And this is basically the same colour as the plum in the clouds. So I can use the same colour. I'll probably need to thin it down a bit. I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, there's also a sandbar here. Now that's optional. You could leave it out if you think it's too complicated. Or if you wanted to try and get it in. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But before I do anything, I just want to get the position of these distant islands in. The distant ones, the paler ones, I'm not going to draw them on because they're pale and I want to do them freehand but these I want to get to these in position so I just know where they are now this one here starts over halfway just over halfway along my painting so about here and just below the horizon now be careful you don't make these too big I can tell you even though that doesn't look like five millimeters that is only five millimeters on this picture so this is my painting is twice the height of this picture so my headland my dis, my me, sorry island here doesn't want to be more than a centimeter high that's all It'd be quite easy to make it too too big so i'm just going to rise that up look to there and then it goes along it dips a bit rises again but it actually goes all the, almost all the way to the edge of my picture here And then I've got a straight line a couple of millimetres below the horizon there. Uh, I'm going to do exactly the same with this one. And this just comes down here leaving a nice gap between these two. That sort of pretty much rises, it falls like that. So this is going to make it easier now for when I just paint the these lines on the water. Now I've got those in position. So I've done those with quite dark pencil, but I'm going to put some quite dark paint on those. So those pencil lines will, should disappear. So let's just focus on this area in front. So I've got a little bit of test paper here. Let me just get this right. I'm going to use my number six spearhead brush. It's got a lovely sharp point on it. If you don't have a brush with quite such a sharp point, then maybe just scale it down. Use a number four or even a number two. I'm going to use the plum, but I'm going to take some of this plum to one side, make sure I've got more water in it than I had before. And then I'm just going to test the brush now on this paper to see if it's giving me a nice fluid narrow line. So I can use the brush now to create these narrow distant lines, the ones you see over there. Now they tend to get a bit broader as you get nearer the foreground so you can hold the brush a bit lower so that broadens the brush stroke and then down here you get this break up effect so to do that you hold the brush really low we've done this before where you scrape the brush across and it gives you that broken effect now what's going to happen is as I develop that as I get up towards here I'm going to put my sandbar in because I'd like to blend this plum into the colour of the sandbar. So my number eight brush is ready to do that. I'll show you now. I'll just quickly do this and then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm using quite a nice full brush. I'm not using this paint dry. I'm running my lines across and I'm trying to get them really long and continuous like this so that they... I'm getting that 
left to right movement, that lovely horizontal movement. Like that. It's just a representation of what's happening in the photograph. And then I'm going to just do a, a sort of broader one there. Hold the brush down a bit lower. That's a nice broad strip there. Now I'm going to just get the brush down. Fill it up with paint again. I'm going to get the brush down nice and low now. And keep, sort of scribble it across so that we get that more broken effect. But again, trying all along to keep this movement from left to right going. There we go. And then I'm going to use, fill the brush up again with paint. This is a bit more solid down here. So this marks the edge of the edge of the water. You can see now I'm now loading the brush with a lot more paint. This is a lot more fluid. I'm going to get up to there. So that's fairly straightforward up to this point, but I'm just going to get the number eight brush now with some wet burnt umber in it and pull that sandbar across maybe a little raw sienna as well okay and while that's nice and wet there now I'm just going to pull this plum up and into it like that and you'll get a lovely soft transition then on the sandbar And then as I'm drying that, as I dry that off now, I'll just add a little bit of slightly stronger plum and just pull a little, little bit of darker paint in from the left as well. It just sort of adds to it. And then when that's dry, just to show you what you can do once that's dry, I think that looks all right. I think I'll leave that as that is. As soon as that's dry, I'll just show you on the hair dryer. it. I'm just going to go back into this now with some a number six just using the tip and we can put a few bits of stone or other seaweed here and there in fact what I've done on my others this week is I've done a little cluster even though it's not in the photo a little cluster of rocks like that I always think that looks quite good but again try and keep this movement this right hand look you can almost finish that off with a little taper just to keep that movement that lovely horizontal movement right so that's all dry uh, it's looking pretty good I want to get these distant um, land masses in now now you'll notice on here that we've got a bit of a, of a lumpy land mass here in the distance which is really pale so I want to make sure that is distant these two here are obviously nearer because they're a bit darker and then these two are the ones that we've already drawn on so let me just get the um, consistency of this paint right I'm going to use my number six brush again this is the plum this is the watery plum I'm going to get plenty of water in that I'm just going to test that on this piece of paper now I want to make sure that that's really fluid really wet and nice and pale as you can see that is really nice and pale so I'm going to fill the brush with it just make sure you've got a full brush uh, and it starts here and it just kind of rises a bit now watch how I do this I'm dragging the paint along making sure that I do not go back over it and fiddle with it a lovely full brush load of nice loose paint it will lay down and dry nice and smooth if you don't put much paint in your brush you'll find yourself going over it and it'll start to go really patchy all right so I'll dry that one off so this distant uh, one has been done that's dry now so what I'm going to do is just get this now and strengthen it a bit with a bit more of the plum so that that's a little bit darker let's just test it on here I think that's a bit too much 
Right, so I've added a bit more water to that. Let's see. That's about right now. That's the mid distance one, so I'm going to put those in. This one rises from here. And again, start at one end and just move along. Just keep moving along so you don't go back on it. And drag the paint into the landmass in front because we're going to be covering that. There's one at the other end as well. That's uh, this one. This comes in from here and rises up, drops into that headland, into that island there. And there's also a little hint of one little bit poking up there, which always looks quite good, I think. So I'm going to put a little bit there as well. But as you can see, I've, I've made sure that the paint is dragged across this island here, because I'm going to paint that out now. So I'll just dry that off. Right, that's looking good. I've uh, dried those off now, so to get these more solid islands in, I'm going to use some burnt sienna. So I've got a little puddle of burnt sienna here, nice and loose, nice and wet. And I'm basically going to fill the whole area of the islands, just going over the paint that I've already put on. That should actually loosen that off a little bit, especially if I give it a little scrub. So if I fill that whole island up with some nice loose burnt sienna, I then go to the plum, which is the stronger plum on the palette. And I can just feather that plum across and into the burnt sienna. You'll find that the burnt sienna will disappear, but it will still be visible through, through the paint. You can put as much plum into that as you think you need to. Just bring that down there. Let's get that horizon on. That straight line across. So there, I've scrubbed quite a lot of the plum into that. But you can still see some of that burnt sienna sort of burning through that plum. So it gives it some texture. And that will look really good. I'm going to do the same with the other one. Do exactly the same with this one then. Fill up the whole of that island with some nice loose burnt sienna and then some of the strong plum and just sort of drag it through the burnt sienna That's it. Just a bit more. Right, okay, so we're ready now to put some rocks in the foreground here. You can see that these rocks are sloping down and sort of disappear into the sand. They're actually quite evenly spaced fingers here, so I'm anxious not to just uh, have three lines coming across here. I'm going to try and identify where they should be in my painting. So you'll notice that uh, the base of this cluster of rocks here is quite a way off the bottom of the picture. I'm just going to put a line there and then there's kind of a line that comes down to, to here at the water's edge. So if I can just get a little cluster of rocks running across the there into that space quite narrow then I've got another sort of cluster of rocks coming here just touching the underside of the other one and then it splits but I'm not going to bring it across quite as far leave it a little bit short like that one little cluster like that and then I've got this third one which comes in from the edge and we've got these rise and falls of these rocks here coming to there and that sort of comes back down to there. So I'm just going to take my little quarter inch flat brush here, just put some water in it. I'm just going to scrub a little bit of paint away. There's a little bit of the plum 
colour, if I can just erase some of that paint from there, just a little bit. Now you've got the choice there, you can either dab that with a bit of kitchen towel or we can go straight in with some of the plum, so the uh, burnt sienna which I'm going to use for these rocks. So this is a quarter, sorry a half inch flat brush and I'm going to basically use burnt sienna like this, fill the brush with burnt sienna. I'm going to use the brush to just put in some burnt sienna across that whole little cluster of rocks. And the idea is I can use the brush now and turn it to get the angle of the rock. And I'm going to go into some really strong plum and cut downwards like this into the burnt sienna that I put on. And as you can see straight away that looks very much like a little cluster of rocks. I want to make sure that the peaks are not all just evenly spaced. So I'll put that along there and just slice a little bit of the dark paint across the bottom like that. This is why I'm using the flat brush so I can get these lovely sharp cut shapes. Now in a minute I'm going to scratch out a little bit of that paint just going to let it settle let's do the, the row in front same thing again lots of quite loose burnt sienna I'll put that little cluster of rocks across there and I mean I've just caught that a little bit there but it doesn't matter again this is this is that plum colour that we've used in the sky and on those distant hills there. Uh, and again, I'm just using the angle of the brush to my advantage here to create this lovely sort of slicing shape at the bottom, and then these cut shapes further up. So the sort of spaces between these rocks. the light spaces that you can see, we can do those with with a little bit of scratching out. So that's just gone a bit pale there, let me just drop a little bit more in there. So you can see quite clearly that there's some light catching these rocks as well. Um, I'm going to use this little clay model shaping tool, you can use a credit card or experiment with any other sort of sharp edge corner of a ruler or anything like that and the idea now is to just pull that through and create a few little highlights on the rock just here and there and I think that looks really effective just enough to make it look like the lights catching the tops of some of those rough areas of rock. Let's do the same now with the, the one in front. Like that. Very effective. So I shall continue uh, with the one down here to the right in a sec and then we'll finish this off with some uh, finishing touches. Right so I've painted on these clusters of rocks and um, they look as if they're floating on the beach at the moment so we need some texture on the beach so all that remains now is to have a look at some of the shapes and movements of these seaweed lines, little stones and pebbles, little water trails and things on the beach. I'm going to use a rigger, this is a size 2 rigger, so let's uh, sort of just move the, keep moving the brush side to side, so we get some, a nice horizontal profile to some of these lines and we'll just drop in a little bit of plum in there as well, 
just used a bit of burnt sienna there. So using this uh, rigger in this way allows you to sort of float the brush around a little bit and just create some of these little trails and uh, we'll convert some of these into little stones and pebbles and things you can see straight away that's having quite a dramatic effect on the beach and then maybe we'll need to start building up a little series of stones and pebbles lying around some of them in conjunction with the lines just a case of trying to get these varying in intensity and size so that they they don't just all like look like a load of spots on a face of a dice it's quite important to evenly spread them out have some along the water's edge there this is a lovely fresh shallow beach I'm sure there'll be lots of uh, water birds feeding in and around the shore here things like oyster catchers and all sorts of other things so uh, we'll just have a few in flight coming down I'll just start this side of center let's just do a few very small ones just over here put two together there and then we'll have those increasing as we go up so again trying I'm trying really hard here not to evenly space these got them in pairs and then singles let's have another one up there the human brain will actually encourage you to put these all in a line or cluster them very evenly spaced I'll just stick another one out here another one right up there and then it looks almost as if there's a whole sort of flock of these birds coming in to feed you can actually put as many of those on as you like I'm actually gonna to have to put another one here because I've just smudged so we'll have a couple of birds there right down at the water's edge just about to land so basically I can sign that and uh, that's going to be a finished painting I hope you have fun having a go mm -hmm.